Hey everybody, welcome back to science. Today we're going to continue with lesson 2.4, which is our fourth lesson in chapter two. So we're moving along pretty uh, well here in chapter two, getting close to the end. So before we start, just want to remind you, this lesson is going to be especially important that you are grabbing a pencil. I would highly suggest pencil today because some of the stuff we're working on you might need to erase. So a pencil and a piece of paper is going to be really important. If you don't have a pencil and you have some other writing utensil, that will work well. Um, but there are some things that we're going to be doing today that you might be needing to go back and revise some of your thinking. So I know for me personally, if I do it in pen and I have to cross it out on my paper, uh, it feels a little bit frustrating for me. So just make sure you're grabbing a pencil and a piece of paper. We're going to be jumping into today's lesson. And one of the reasons that you are going to need to have that piece of paper and a pencil is we're going to be drawing out some timelines. So I'm going to show you how we can draw this timeline out together. If you do have access to Amplify and you can log into Lesson 2.4, there is a digital version of this where you can drag and drop some of the icons. So if you have that at home, that could be another way that you could do it. But if you're unsure of how to do that, I uh, just want to ask you to grab that pencil and paper right now, and then we'll go ahead and start to draw out our timeline together. So pause the video now, grab your supplies that you're going to need, and we'll meet back up in a few moments. All right, so as you notice, we have a timeline. You may have seen a timeline before in uh, social studies or a history class. Um, timelines are also really similar to number lines, which we use a lot in math. So if you are drawing this out at home, I'm going to kind of draw this out so that you can draw on your paper. I'm just going to kind of uh, draw over some of the pieces of the timeline here. So start on the left of your piece of paper and just draw a line. You're going to notice my line is not going to be perfectly straight, um, but Try and draw that line as straight as you can. And there's going to be a, a few different things we're going to label, but I want us to start on the ends so that you can be as organized as possible in labeling your timeline. So on that left side, this is our oldest date that is going to be on the timeline. Go ahead and start to write out five billion years ago. You could abbreviate that if you want, just make sure you're recognizing that we are talking in terms of billions of years, which is a really, really long period of time. All the way on the right, you're going to write today. So now you've got both of those ends labeled. And then what I like to do anytime I have a number line is I make a little mark in the middle. You're gonna notice that this timeline didn't necessarily have that. My mark is not quite perfect, but that's okay. It will just help you as you're going through to start to label the other blue diamonds on here with the dates that they have listed that will be helpful for us here in a second. And if you're getting behind, don't worry. You can always pause the video and get caught up. The last thing that we're going to want to draw on here um, is we're going to want to draw these red lines. I am not going to draw them in, uh, red, but I'm again going to draw over them so you can kind of think about where you want yours to be drawn. So I'm going to start with this one because it's easy. I think it's right in between four and five billion. Got a little arrow there. We've got one that's sort of, or maybe a little bit closer to the four billion than the three billion, there's an arrow. And then one right on the billion years ago. Okay, and now you're gonna notice that there are a lot, a lot of arrows over here. So don't worry about your arrows being perfect, but try to space them out evenly. You're gonna notice that these first two arrows that I'm drawing are pretty darn close together. And then this arrow to finish off is also pretty close together. And then visually, if I'm thinking about it, this one looks about halfway in between 1 billion and today. So go ahead and draw that in. Okay, 
Now, now that we've done all this drawing, I just want you to pause the video if you're a little bit behind because I'm going to clear off these annotations because uh, it's a little bit tricky to tell what's going on with our timeline the way that I've highlighted it. But that way you can see what exactly you do need to draw on your timeline at home. So go ahead and pause the video now if you need a little bit more time to complete that. And then I'm going to be talking about what our next steps will be. So now that you've got your timeline built, you're going to notice that there are seven important events in Earth's evolutionary history listed here at the bottom. And for a warm up, we're going to practice kind of thinking about how we would sort something on a timeline. And I'm going to suggest that the strategy you use is either start at the oldest part of your timeline and work to the newest, or start with the newest and search for some things that get older and older and put those um, in the correct order. So to show you sort of what I'm thinking about here is if I were to be thinking about, okay, I have something that's between five and four billion years ago. Well, I know that that number is gonna be smaller than five billion, but it's going to be greater than four billion. So if I start to look down here, I can skip over any of these that say million because I know those aren't going to be what I'm going to be putting on the timeline for this missing piece right here. Notice there's one that says a billion. Here's another one that says a billion. So in thinking about those two, the first living thing says 3.6 billion and the other one, the formation of Earth, happened 4.6 billion years ago. So I'm going to go ahead and re recognize that the formation of Earth is that one that's going to go into that box uh, right there. And we'll make the color just a little bit darker so that you can see that. So that's what you're going to do for the rest of these six boxes. You should have your arrows already drawn. So go ahead and pause the video so that you can think through where each of these other ones are going to go that we did not label. And I misspoke earlier, I said there's seven total. Um, I did one of eight, so you have seven more that you're gonna wanna sort. So once you've got those seven heroes with the event that happened during that time, go ahead and restart the video. But for now, pause and get this warm up finished up. All right, so what you just looked at was the uh, evolutionary history of Earth. So some of the times in history classes, um, you may have looked at some timelines that show like 100 years. This one's pretty crazy because evolutionary history, which is what we're studying in this unit, is something that happens over a very, very long period of time that spans the history of the Earth from the creation of the Earth, which is 4.6 billion years ago, um, and continues through the first pieces of cellular life to present day, where we are living. So just to kind of take a look at, hopefully this is what your warm-up ended up looking like, you can see it's pretty crazy. The Earth has been around for a really, really long time, and evolution has been creating all sorts of different unique organisms that live on our planet um, starting around 3.6 billion years ago with the first living things, uh, but then creating some multicellular life, which would be kind of what we consider today as things that we can see are small animals. And then moving into, you can notice humans have only been around for about 100,000 years. So in this huge history of Earth, we haven't really even taken up very many at a time, which to me is, is always mind-blowing to see this. So this is our evolutionary history, and we're going to be continuing today to make another timeline based on some slides. So be ready to, uh, on your piece of paper, draw out another timeline here, because uh, that's what we're going to be moving into next. Uh, luckily, uh, this timeline has a little bit less going on. So everything in blue down here is what you're going to want to copy onto your piece of paper. 
just like in our timeline that we warmed up with, things that were the longest are going to be on the left hand side. And then on the right hand side, you're going to want to label that as the shortest period of time. So you look at some major events in Earth's evolutionary history for your warm up. The next piece in this activity, what we're going to do is there's going to be a few different um, pieces of evolution that are a little bit more specific than those ones in the warm up. And you're going to be organizing them all along this timeline right here. So, going to kind of show you what you're going to want to think through as you go through these. This is the first card. So the first card says that um, we've got the first living things, earliest mammals, and then there's some other information on here. So for each of these cards, you're going to want to pause the video for each time you see one, and I will click through them here in a moment. And when you do that, you're going to want to uh, first read through the card, okay? Some of the cards are going to have more text. Some of them are going to have more text features or pictures. Both are going to be important in helping you to start to think about which of these changes would have taken the longest or the shortest period of time. We'll talk more about what that means in a second as we go through these instructions. But the first thing you want to do is you want to start to read through the card. What is the information that it tells us? And then focusing in on specifically what are the evolutionary changes. So if I'm looking at this one, it's talking about from the first living things, which were these tiny cells, um, individual single-celled organisms, to earliest mammals, all the things that had to evolve from here to here, tissues had to develop, nerve cells had to develop, backbones had to develop, limbs with digits. So there's a lot of things that had to change. Those are those evolutionary changes that you should look for on the, the next few cards that you're going to see. That's your step two. Step three, this is why at the beginning of the lesson I said you might want to use a pencil because you're going to need to think about how long do you think it would take for this change to happen? Do you think this is something that's going to take a shorter um, period of time or do you think it's something that's going to take a longer period of time? That's going to determine where you put it on your timeline that you hopefully just drew out on your piece of paper, right? So if you think that it would have taken a really long time for that change to happen, you're gonna put it closer to the left. If you think it was somewhere in the middle, you can go ahead and put it in the middle. And I'm gonna show you how you're gonna write that in a second, so don't worry. Or if you think it didn't take a lot of time, put it on the shortest. So those are the steps, those will be on each slide. And then this is a huge tip. You spent some time at the beginning of this unit working on that uh, timeline in the warm-up, use that as a support as you go through this. That can be really, really helpful. So once we've looked at these, I'm going to start to think we just saw on that warm-up that first living things, that happened a long time ago. And I actually um, remember, I think it was about 3.6 billion years. And thinking back, I don't remember the mammal's date exactly, but that was pretty far to the uh, left hand, or excuse me, the right hand side of our screen. So I know that that must have taken a long period of time. So once I think through that piece for myself, I'm going to place it somewhere on my timeline. So I'm thinking personally that that's something that would have taken a reasonably long period of time. So I'm going to go ahead and start and put it here. Remember, if you end up going through and looking at some other cards, and you think that maybe another one was older, you're going to put it over here. So as you go through this, this is an example of what your end timeline might look like. So I read card one, I put card one on there. You just need to write card one. Then as I go through, I'm going to sort out where those other cards might go. We did one card together and place that on the timeline. These right here, really want to be clear, this is an example only, just to show you that as you go through, you might find some cards that you think are older than card one, and then you might find some that you think took a shorter amount of time. And so you're going to place those to the left, closer to where we have this shortest period of time. You may also see some cards 
be on the lookout for this um, because this is sort of a third option. Something could ta have taken longer, could have been shorter, but also you may see a card or multiple cards that you think took the same amount of time. So I kind of tried to show how you would do that here. If you would think card three and five, that arrow is just pointing to the same spot. You've got one below your timeline and one above. So I'm gonna continue to click through these cards. You're gonna wanna pause on each individual one of these and think through these instructions right here, okay? Think through these instructions. As you are reading through the card, pause the video, place it where you would on your timeline, and then we're going to be moving on to our second video, which is going to be looking at uh, simulation. So take your time. These have some pretty interesting changes that took place over evolutionary, uh, over our evolutionary history. So be thinking about putting those onto your slides. I'm gonna go ahead and click through those cards now. Just make sure on each card you are pausing the video reading through the instructions and thinking through these three steps. All right, so hopefully everybody was able to get those cards sorted and think through a little bit where you think those evolutionary changes might go on your timeline and thinking about how long they may have taken in our evolutionary history for some of those changes to take place. What we're going to move into now is looking at uh, a few specific organisms that are related and start to think about some of the changes that took place in order for uh, different species to evolve and branch off of one of each of one another in that evolutionary tree. So the animals we're going to be looking at are going to be the Eleomeryx, the giraffe, um, and then we're also going to be looking at the Acanostega, which is a tricky one to say. So I'm going to ask that before we jump into talking about the simulation that you go ahead and write out this T-chart. We've been making a lot of T-charts lately, I know, but it's a really great way for us to organize our thinking and it's really gonna help you as you are taking some notes today because what we're gonna be doing is comparing some of the structures of these different uh, species to try and figure out which ones are most closely related and kind of where did some changes take place. Um, we're gonna be looking for similarities, we're gonna be looking for differences. So this is gonna give you a good setup for organizing your notes. Um, before we jump into the simulation, uh, I just want to remind you that I'm gonna walk through three different options you have. You've got the option that if you've got the simulation at home, there's going to be uh, some blue slides here in a bit. And you're going to want to open up lesson 2.4, open up the simulation that's in activity four in uh, the Amplify platform. And then you're gonna wanna click on the vertebrates icon. So please go ahead and think to yourself right now, which of the options are you going to get the most learning from? That first option that I already started to talk about is if you have access to Amplify at home, you're gonna to wanna to try and complete this by yourself. If you don't have access to Amplify at home, the other two options that I'm going to give you is, um, I've actually taken some screenshots of the simulation. So if you're somebody who doesn't have that simulation at home, but you're still wanting to push yourself and you're still wanting to read through some of the content independently, there'll be a few slides for you to go ahead and read through and start to make your own notes independently. And then that final third option, if you want to get a little bit some more support, see what that simulation might look like, you can watch the video and we will work through uh, reading some of it together. I'm not gonna be taking notes because that's gonna be your responsibility to be thinking about uh, even in that section where we work together, but I will be walking you through it a little bit more. So just as a reminder, go ahead and think which of those three options is gonna work best for you. You're gonna notice that for if you do have access to the simulation, this is gonna be where you're going to 
uh, want to take some time and pause the video and go through as you are um, working through the simulation for yourself independently. Um, just remember when you open up that simulation, uh, you're going to want to make sure that you have clicked on the vertebrates icon and then you're going to be zooming in until you see a page that has a giraffe on it. Um, so going to go ahead and just quickly click through these blue slides. If you are somebody that's pushing yourself and going ahead and doing this simulation at home, that's awesome. Just use this first slide here. Our real, our, our goal here is to really, we're going to be zooming in on the giraffe and thinking about which of these descendant species um, are most similar to each other. So you're going to want to read some of the descriptions and then look at some of the structures, of course, because we do know that structural similarities help us to understand the relationship between those two different species. So if you're going to do that independently, I put this up just as a reminder, get this jotted down and then go ahead and open up the sim. There's going to be a final thing that you're going to want to think through. So if you're doing the simulation independently, pause the video here. This is going to be your wrap up after you've completed the sim and taken some notes in that T chart. There's just two questions um, and then you can skip to the end of this video for a reflection. Uh, for the rest of us, we're going to go ahead and get started in the simulation. The second option is if you do want to read through some of these things independently, the green slides are going to help you do that. So the same thing as those blue slides that I just talked through, you want to make sure you've got your T-chart ready to go, um, all drawn out, and then I'm going to slowly click through these slides. So you can pause, spend a little bit of time. You're going to have the opportunity to read not only um, about some detailed information about the two species, but you're also going to be able to see some of those structural differences. So pause as you need to and go ahead and stay strong working through this independently. And just like those people that are working on the sim at home, at the very last few uh, seconds of this video, there is a reflection that you're going to want to complete as well. All right, so now for those of us who have no access to the simulation and you want to work through uh, some of those pieces um, by following along in the video, uh, now is your opportunity we're going to work through um, in these red slides. So if you are someone who is on one of those other ones and you happen to stop on this slide, you're going to want to fast forward through the video just a little bit further so that you can get to uh, a slide that says uh, wrap up reflection. So as we go through this, I really want to stress, you should already have that T-chart written out on your piece of paper. Um, and then you're going to be responsible for taking notes. I'm not going to be putting down the notes in here. So what you're going to want to think about is what structures are similar? What are you noticing um, these two species have in common? And then what are some of those key differences as well? So let's go ahead and pause now if you need to take one more second. I'm giving you lots of warnings, so hopefully you've got it written out. But if you don't, this is your last chance to pause, get your T-chart set up to take some notes before we hop into the simulation. Um, I'm going to go ahead and exit out of my slides. I'm going to go into my Amplify platform, which may look a little bit different from yours at home. I'm going to open up evolutionary history, open up the vertebrates. 
And then I'm going to go into the tree where I'm going to zoom into the artiodactyls, which is not the same as a pterodactyl, um, even though it has that similar sounding end there. We're going to be talking about giraffes. Um, and then we're going to be talking about comparing the giraffe to two other species. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the two species cards that we're going to start with for our comparison. Um, the first one is going to be the giraffe, which is right here. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. We're going to notice that that pops up into our screen right here. Um, and then the second animal that I am going to be comparing is the acanthostega, which it's really helpful if you're like me and struggle with the pronunciations. You're actually going to see those right here on your screen in the parentheses. So those might help you out. So what we're going to do in this video is I'm just going to be reading through and I'm going to try and zoom in to make these a little bit bigger so we can see it better. Um, I'm going to be reading through the information on these two species, what you're going to want to make sure you have ready is that T chart so that you can start to list out some similarities and differences that you're hearing so that we can figure out which of these species um, are going to be most closely related to our giraffe. So let's go ahead and get started. It says giraffes are the tallest land animals alive today. The largest giraffes are up to six meters tall almost as tall as a two-story building. I hope some of you have gotten to see giraffes at the zoo. They're really, really cool animals. I love giraffes. All giraffes belong to a larger group called ruminants, animals that can process plants for food in special stomachs with four chambers. Deer, cattle, yaks, and antelope are also ruminants. Giraffes and other ruminants are all included in an even larger group of hoofed animals called artiodactyls. The acanthostega was a fish type of vertebrae that lived around 360 million years ago. These creatures were aquatic, lived in the water, and had gills. However, instead of fins, this is really cool I think, they had small limbs with toes at the end. Scientists think that the acanthostega were some of the very first creatures to actually have limbs. Their limbs were very small and probably not strong enough to support much weight, especially out of the water. This means that although they had limbs, these creatures were probably not able to walk on land. So, here you can kind of start to see you might want to take some time and even pause the video here because um, we're not going to go through every single thing that is on, uh, everything every single structure I should say that is on here but what you're going to want to do is be looking for some similarities and differences between these two different species and taking some notes on those. So there's five different body parts that you might want to uh, consider as you're taking notes. You don't necessarily have to write about all five, but I would choose at least a few to talk about before we move on and start to compare the giraffe to our second species. So go ahead, take a second, pause the video right now, and compare some of those structures that you're seeing between these two species. Okay, so Hopefully you got a chance to go ahead and make some comparisons between these two. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to close out the box for the acanthostega because we're going to be done with that one for now. And then the second uh, specific organism we're going to be looking at is the elio, uh, elomerix, which again, if you're having trouble pronouncing it, use those pronunciations because these are some pr pretty tricky names and it's okay to struggle through them, just make sure you're using that support. So let's go ahead and read through and compare these two. Uh, we've already read the giraffe and it has not changed. So let's go ahead and read through our eleomerics. The eleomerics were grazing animals that lived on land about 25 million years ago. Fossils of eleomerics have been found in, in Europe. North America, Asia, and Africa. 
These animals grew to be two meters long and had lived in many different environments. Some may have lived in forests, while others have lived in shallow water, the way hippos do today. Elomerics are part of a larger group called ruminants, animals that can process plants for food in special stomachs with four chambers. Deer, cattle, yaks, and antelope are also ruminants. So I'm gonna go up here and click on the structure. So that was some of the detailed information. Um, and I forgot to click on this on the last one, but it is kind of cool. Um, if you wanna click and see the appearance, there is what our eleomerics look like. And I'll go ahead and show you the acanthostega since we didn't uh, look at that in the last one. Um, but hopefully you're probably uh, aware of what a giraffe looks like, but it's cool to see what those uh, different species that might not even be on the planet anymore, what they might have looked like when they were around uh, previously. So what I'm gonna have you do now is, again, you're gonna wanna pause the video here. This is a great opportunity for you to look for similarities and differences between these two species um, and take a look at their specific structures. Again, just like, um, we did earlier, you've got five different structures to compare. So pause the video, take some time now to go ahead and compare those and add some more of your notes to your T-chart. So hopefully now we've jumped back into our slideshow here and hopefully you have gotten a chance and your T-chart should be filled out with some of those specific notes that you took. If it's not, you're gonna to wanna to go back, uh, rewind the video a little bit and spend a little bit more time reading that, or you can go back to the green slides where there's more information on uh, the two species that you've gotta be comparing to a giraffe. Uh, but we are almost done with the lesson for today, so I wanna move on for those of you who have been diligently taking notes and following along as we go. These are the two kind of wrap up questions that you want to answer to, uh, finish up today. And then on our last slide here, we're going to have a reflection. So I'm going to sign off for now and let you take some time to go ahead and complete these questions. Um, these are our two kind of final questions for the simulation. And then there will be a reflection for the whole lesson. So we'll look forward to seeing you next time when we jump into lesson 2.5. Take care and finish this lesson strong on the next two slides without me.